Okay, we ready? Before we start, do roll call. Just want to remind everybody that all of the work session meetings will be videotaped and audio taped. So please be mindful of what you say and do. So, Jesse, roll call, please. Mayor Napolitani? Here. Deputy Mayor Donlin? Here. Council Member Ajara? Here. Fisher? Here. Terry? Here. The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the Coaster, posted in town hall and filed in the Office of the Municipal Clerk on September, I mean on December 8th, 2022. Before we get on to our items for discussion, we are going to have Mike Palutis do a presentation for us on Lollipop Pond and the trails at Wanamassa. So Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you. Cameras up there. Okay. <laughs> Audio's here. So, so stand here. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank Mike, you. thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. You know, this is just informational. You know, I just want to present some facts to everybody. I know multiple council members have you know, me to talk to you at length over this. And yourself, Mr. Mayor, the township manager. Been working on this for years, you know. Township engineer, we, we met down at Dave de Rouge, and I just kind of wanted to tie everything together because there's been multiple parts of this, and we're working on different things. But I just wanted to share with everybody in, in one little booklet. Um, I did it in PowerPoint, you know, it's kind of hard to send, but I thought this was the best way. And if you can keep this, if we meet again for anything, you know, please reference this back again. Uh, you know, we started up a township owned property just to kind of highlight what we're speaking about. And we're in the, if you were in the Wanamasa section, we're in Weka Pipel Drive in between Sunset Avenue and Park Boulevard. And in there, there's small streets, most of them are tree streets down that area. And then we have a little bit of a lollipop pond. And you see on the cover, that's a picture of a lollipop pond. Just did it with my iPhone in the springtime or last year. Uh, pretty significant size pond. And it's one of the major spillways into Theo Lake there. Uh, if you move up from North Didmere, you can see that we have a little bit of spillway there that I highlighted, and then we have an upper pond. And then also, if you go further north, we have a footbridge that connects the Sunset Avenue area of Wanamasa Park Boulevard, and then we have our beloved Dave DeRouge Park there. Just want to kind of orientate everybody there. On the next slide, we have our current trails, which are highlighted. And what I mean by highlighted, what you can actually walk and get around right now within, within the Lollipop Pond region there. Starting with the big yellow orange area is the, the main focus of you know kind of my passion and where I live around that area there is the start of the trails on North Dittmere and Walnut. It's a little wonky there because Walnut's on the one area and North Dittmere is a paper street. And if you can walk down there all the way down to Chestnut Avenue, you can get off to Chestnut Avenue there. But you can also go across the spillway when the water is down and make your way over to the sunset side and come out on South Dittmere and make your way down to Antonio's, the shopping center there. Um, a lot of people use those trails. They walk their dogs, children walk through there, a number of kids ride their bikes. It's pretty well done. Uh, there is some encroachment going on. There's a lot of public dumping there, unfortunately. There is signs there, but people are taking advantage of it a little bit. And there's a little bit of overgrowth, and we have erosion from the pond onto our public road. And also just highlighting the footbridge, which is in use, connecting Sunset, Ave Sunset Avenue area with Park Boulevard. And we have some trails which go around Dave de Rouge, uh, connected by the bathroom, and you can make your way all the way out to Logan Road there and head out to Sunset that way. What I've been discussing with a number of you is, you know, really phase one, I'm just speaking of it, you know, kind of immediate action that can be done, identifying that we have this trail which begins at North Dittmere and brings you, can bring you all the way down to the Birch Avenue area. That is a paper street Birches right now. Uh, there is public drains there, public works down there a couple times a year, cleaning that out when it floods. But that is a, public, a paper road there. You used to be able to walk down from Walnut Avenue and North Dittmere all the way down to Dave de Rouge. There is public access there, uh, kind of hidden now, a little bit, again, overgrowth, encroachment from neighbors. And on the bottom part there, you used to be able to walk all the way down to the bridge and then connect right into Dave de Rouge. There is some fencing up there that we have for public things, but I want to make everybody aware that they are, they, this was active trails at one time. And again, with encroachment, overgrowth. Um, how do we get there? You know, again, this isn't me coming to the council like you have to do something. This is just informative. You know, some some information. Spoke to a number of the neighbors. Number spoke with the Old Lake Commission. You know, everybody's on board with this. And you know, where do we start? How do we get this going? This is not a shovel-ready project in any means. Um, and in the interim, we're meeting with Dave and Greg and a number number of council members. 
we've heard about 1421, you know, there's a fence on public property. It, it's a fact, it's there, you can see it. It's right in the middle of the trail. Um, I did speak to the person that put the fence up, fully admits it, it's, it's township property. I told the homeowner previously, you know, that's township. He was berated to put the fence up. He said, you're gonna sign the contract, put it on there, and he did. And he said, when you move, I'm gonna move it back for X amount of dollars. And the gentleman did not agree to paying that fee. So I know there was some dispute with the new homeowner and you know, the property is in dispute now. So I just gave some suggestions here. My main concern is, you know, I get it. I have empathy for the <coughs> homeowner. There's other homeowners on the lake too, and there's other issues with this. There's a shed on one part of our property, and we're losing multiple parts of North Deepmere on the pond side through erosion. No fault of anybody with Mother Nature's, and the walking trail is getting smaller and smaller. With the way the fence is right now from the street, it looks like eh, it's about a 50-50 split, but as you get closer, it's only about two or three feet before you actually end up in the pond. So um, that's my main concern. I don't know how you solve that. You know, I did give some suggestions. Uh, I'm a person of compromise. When looking more at the tax records, it, I did notice that that homeowner also has an additional lot, which, again, I, I'm no survey expert, but I believe it's inside the pond right now or on the other side of North Dittmer. Maybe some sort of compromise with swapping those two pieces of land can come to fruition uh, for them. Um, again, they're just suggestions. I'm not blaming anyone. I just want to make folks aware of the situation on the ground. Um, another thing I would really love township help with, and, I, and again, it's educating homeowners not to dump their yard waste on the pond, on the pond on the property. Um, I know some of you noticed it when you walked it the one day, seeing you know there's Christmas trees, there's leaves. I get it, but maybe just education can help with that. Um, community involvement. You know, let's talk about a dot spot. I know there's we need to have. A strong policy with some restrictions and what the people that actually adopt the spot are responsible for. Uh, maybe a trail program, what restrictions also. And then we can, you know, move into clean sweep for the pond, fishing events, bring public awareness of it. Uh, I did include the copy of the survey there that kind of shows, you know, where we're speaking of Walnut Avenue in North Sydney, where it is a paper street. And then we flip over and we just show some pictures there where we have a lot of the brush and everything ending up in the pond in the pond area. It's causing problems for Deal Lake and it's causing problems for, you know, our surfers down in Lock Harbor because that water eventually gets in there. You know, my daughter comes out sometimes covered in grass and leaves and everything and, you know, it starts all the way up here, believe it or not. And, if, you know, if we just, a little bit of education can help. We do have signs here, but we just might have to take it a step further with folks. And as we kind of move on. You know, Lollipop Trail in North Dittmer or Walnut, you know, it's two pictures in one there. I tried to capture the adopted by spot. That family that has a current name on there, uh, they've left the town now for a number of years. You know, it's the third or fourth owner of the home near that. Uh, I'm willing to take that on, you know. Again, what restrictions, what approval of the township and council, what can be done, what cannot be done. Uh, really to kind of help launch it and get folks involved in understanding that this is the start of a trail. Um, it's not just a trail, too, I want to point out. There is no safe passage between Walton with Peckle and Logan Road. You know, we have children going down to the park. We have a beautiful Dave DeRouche Park, but there's no sidewalks. I know there's been plans. We had plans when I was on the school board to get safe passage down there. We spoke about it, you know, and this could be a great alternative, too, to have that safe passage from with the Peckle all the way down to Dave DeRouche because there is some sidewalks at Dave DeRouche there in the parking lot. We can connect it maybe at a little bit of a cost avoidance to the township, but really safe passage for folks. If you go to, you see the picture of Chestnut Avenue and South Ditmore, you kind of get an idea of what the trails used to look like. Uh, that is open to the public. You can walk down Chestnut Avenue off of Park Boulevard, or you can take that short pathway from the Walnut Avenue, North Ditmere area to bring you up there. Uh, that's a great little pathway. It's a spillway. It is township property. It is marked with the township of Ocean all throughout there, and it does connect the Park Boulevard side of Wanamasa with the sunset, and you can get over to the shops in that area. Um, and quite a few people use it, a number of folks, you know, walk their dogs there, um, and I see a bunch of people always trying to clean it up. The problem is on both sides, there's a lot of silt in the ponds. And I know it's on the agenda in the future to get those dredged, uh, but again, this is just some information. Uh, the next one I just want to show you is more township-owned property that folks may not be aware of, but this is on, we're, we're continuing on the trail going up North Dittmere, where we've left the spillway to our left, we're continuing on the Park Boulevard side. You can walk all the way out to what is Birch, Birch Avenue, it is a paper street to bring you out, 
in the corner of there, B95 and L2 for reference. Uh, it's actually it's overgrown, but you used to be able to walk out to there. And if you went down a little bit further, B95 L3.02, it is a sliver of land. There's two sliver of lands. One is owned by one of the homeowners and one is township property. I was told that that was also a walkway where you can get an easement out to Maple Avenue. And then further down, up on the upper left is B95 L6. That's kind of a questionable area, I think, with erosion. That's where the, where the stream is, and that is in the area where we have that footbridge, too. But I was told that you could, at one time, walk from there, that trail, and end up right in Dave DeRouge without ever having to walk on Park Boulevard. Again, a lot of this is overgrown. There is some encroachment, but just for education. Phase two is thinking, you know, once we have a dredge, we don't want to do too much until we get a real plan of dredging, understanding maybe about bulkheads. But I wanted to highlight in red what I was told and what I found in pictures historically, what this was all township property, and these were all trails at one time, connecting you from Wicapetco Drive all the way down to what is Logan Road. And you, there is some parts of the trail still there, but just want to highlight. And then on the sunset side, there's quite a bit of township property. It is somewhat submerged there, but there's a number of areas where we can have additional trails and walking incorporated. Again, how do we get there? You know, on phase two of the Wicker Peckle drive to Logan Road, you know, obviously dredge the Pop Pond, possibly install bulkheads as needed to protect the roadways on the South Dittmer area. We don't want any of those roads falling into the pond and causing more problems for the township. Install lighting, potentially signage, trash and recycling plans at accessible points. But the community has to be involved too. <laughs> and you know, really want this, it's not here to say township, you have to do everything. The community really has to be involved spoke to the Environmental Commission, and spoke to Shade Tree Commission. You know, we can do events such as plant a tree event, have them there, and have the right trees planted on the pond, you know, for irrigation, for water conservation, but also maybe provide some privacy for our homeowners that share that trail area. Have them have the option, you know, what are the right trees for them to have some privacy. Uh, we don't want to just encroach on them now and remove all that privacy and have people walking down there. You know, potentially, you know, have a build a fishing dock for an Eagle Scout project or some sort of, again, community involvement. This is a great location for a potential paddleboard or kayak launch, especially for folks that are learning the sport. It's, you know, it's a nice compound, it's close, it's easy access. Um, you know, I kayak up and down Deal Lake, you know, I find every easement I can, you know, mostly down in Lock Ar or uh, Inner Lake and areas and in Lock Arbor when I can, but you know, it's a great place to, for kids to learn and for folks, beginners to learn. So, recreation department we can partner with down the road. And again, our adopt a spot, adopt a bench, and trail to maintain. And, and I was thinking adopt a bench with some of the business owners on the South Ditmar side. We have Antonio's there, we have a number of, we have a new ice cream shop, we have different businesses there that, you know, could help beautify this, but it has to be a partnership with everybody. Um, Coming to, towards the end there, the future bulkhead, improvement trails, lighting. This is just kind of a renditioning of what it could be there. You know, to really make it public access. We see this, and again, I don't want to compare us to other towns, but we see what they've done with their lakes and ponds down in Spring Lake and Long Branch and really brought a place of, you know, joy and excitement for the community. They have fishing events, they have things, but cleaning them up is a big area. Uh, you know, I take it personally because then I know I swim that, that ocean there and then we have to deal with all the effects of any pollution down there. So, but, you know, again, I'm not here to, you know, derail anything. I just want to bring attention. And lastly, you know, phase three, once we get that done, you know, we can connect the field lake trail. You know, a number of township owned properties on the North Wanamasa side that are also ours. Uh, we can do a boat launch there for non motorized sports, boats down there, kayaks. We own a number of properties up and down Deal Lake. We can connect them. I spoke to Don Brockwell from the Deal Lake Commission. He said, yeah, we were trying to do something. You know, I, I don't think enough residents realize that how much lakefront property we have, you know, that we can make for their, their use down the road. Again, this is long term, but appreciate your time. Uh, questions if you have for me? Mike, this was a phenomenal presentation. I mean, I grew up fishing there, you know, walking over. Um, and uh, just a great area. Then on the deal, when we were on the DLA commission, we had dredged the upper section of the pond years ago. I know the lower end hasn't been done. Right. There was work done. Um, I think it's a great idea. We talked briefly about you know you maybe spearheading um, 
adopt a spot and we'll have that meeting with David and we'll go over that. Thank I think you. it's a great Thank idea. You. We'll just have to see how, you know, we've done it in the past. So, I mean, there's there's already a template there. It's not like we have to reinvent the wheel, but we have to look at all different aspects of it. There's, there's a lot. There's got to be restrictions. There's got to be yep. some legal issues. And you understand what we can right. and can't do. Yeah, the biggest concern I have, I think it's a fantastic idea, but the one concern I have is we have to really monitor who's clearing these trails out. Right. Because as you know, we as you go further over by South Edge, your people took it upon themselves to clear the top of the bank there. Mm -hmm. And now we have bank failure. So it, it, you can't just selectively clear things. Right, so right. That, somebody that's why has to has monitor to who's, who's doing what in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the only other comment I have, which is I think is a safety issue, is the crossing that you have of the cross lollipop prom bridge there at the southern end of the chestnut, crossing over to Sunset. Yes. That is kind of a safety hazard because, you know, depending if the top the water's up a little bit and a lot yeah. of moss grows on that concrete spillway, uh, I don't really want to, I wouldn't so recommend you promote that crossing at this time until we get some safety features in sure. there and probably dredge that lollipop pond area mm -hmm. because it's a real easy way for a kid to get hurt in there. He falls into the lower lake, we could have a problem. Yeah, there, it, 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 there's <laughs> a fence, and, and this is where it's a double edged sword. There is fencing there now. Yeah, but that's, and then they said that's not safe fencing yeah. for waterways. No. And, it, you know, and that's where I was more investigating. It's like, oh, it's township owned property. Yeah. And again, this is, this is for. I yeah, I think reading, but yeah, yeah. it's a great future use, walk, but yeah. we have to wait. We have to wait till we get there to fix that improvement because we can't really promote that crossing at right, this time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get anybody hurt in there. that we won't ever be able to use it. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. but, but it is, but it is successful now. Yeah. I'm just saying, things, this is what you can walk now. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I think and it's a great idea. It, yeah. it would be great if we can get the Park Boulevard side done and, and help with the sidewalk area. You yeah. know, safe mm -hmm. passage area. Mm -hmm. there. But thank you, and I know you're familiar with the area. We've walked it. Yeah. Hopefully, get to walk it again. Soon. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everyone's time. Again, I just wanted to share some great time. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Together, Love and it. comments, Thank questions, you. please let me know. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't have all the answers, and I, and I don't expect counsel to have like all it. the answers. Yeah, yeah. No. What's that? Yeah. It looks like you do. No, you, right? have, you, have, you have a great vision. He puts I think on we a good show. Direction. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, the vision is excellent. Yeah. I think we just all need to come together to figure out step by step how to make it happen. Right. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I want to bring it because I know you have her dealing with the property issue there. And, and mm -hmm. you know, Dave has been great. You know, I'm sorry that he's not here tonight, but, you know, he's been in yourself. You know, we've met about this multiple times that, you know, how do we start this? And, and I'm willing to take on the start. But, again, it has to be a restriction. Mm -hmm. can't just yeah. be like, and I, and I think I told Dave and yourself, like, so I'm not touching anything because <laughs> I don't want to give the wrong impression or have folks out there doing it. But, you know, it, it's a great asset. It's a gem that needs to be cleaned up a little bit and, and I'm not, you know, I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and get mm -hmm. started and, and take responsibility for it and, you know, really hopefully get the community involved. Everybody wants to get involved, you know, we'll see what happens after. Do you know Laura McBride? I don't. Okay, I'll put you in touch with her. Okay. She's the Deal Lake Watershed Alliance. Okay. Um, she put the rain garden in um, at yes. the corner, so, yes. but she's got a big group of people who I think would be interested in okay. this type of project Beautiful. as yeah. well. So. Yeah, Don's been very helpful too. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm willing to take help from anywhere, really. You know, yeah. I uh, appreciate it. But any other questions, comments? Yeah. Good no, job. Please keep these, you know, if you have comments, you know, if we meet again, you know, love to hear it. I love the feedback. And like I said, well, all my, it wasn't my vision. You know, my neighbors told me about the trails and, you know, try to walk it and spoke to folks. And then, you know, really during COVID, you know, family and I would pick up the trash around there and we're killing time like everybody else and, and just, you know, wanted this. Get us forward a little bit more. I know we're going to plan on dredging, but thank you for your time. I don't want to thank you. More. Good yeah. job, Thanks, Mike. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Yay, Greg. You're allowed to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a real, relatively short list tonight. Um, Joe, play a part of so, so That means that so says problem. Hey, <laughs> right. He's probably got more <laughs> questions than I have in there. Uh, first one, JPP, we've done all the rest of the analysis for the last part. Cool. We've got all the numbers together. I just got to sit down and Ricky and confirm that we have enough money to put that out the bid this spring. Okay. So that should be a, pretty much a go. Uh, the speed bumps, I've talked to Public Works. We have to talk to Ricky to make sure there's available funding to buy the five speed bumps we're going to put in the five locations. We're going to do that on Monday. Uh, next thing was the striping. We came up last meeting. Police did between last meeting and this meeting gave me all their locations of where the striping needs to be redone. That we will, I have to wait till the funding of the budget is available to know what we can and can't do, if that's uh, funded by Ricky or not. Uh, the next thing is the bike lanes. I need Rob's help on this. Um, I'm waiting for county approval. 
they never gave us a written approval for putting the bike lane out there. They've changed the speed limit. They've done an ordinance to change the speed limit. I've talked to the county engineer three or four times, and every time I call him, he says, I thought we gave you that. I, I, I need it in writing before we go paint the street. I'll send him. So if you could maybe follow up on that for me, because I'm sure one phone call to a certain person will promote that letter right away. <laughs> Uh, the <laughs> next, next thing is the uh, leaf compost site. I told you that they're coming up with a new, uh, we call it a wood leaf, a wood chipping and brush facility. That um, is, is coming forward, but our current permit, I checked, is good till 26. So it gives us a little bit of time, unless they come after us on all the conditions that we may not be meeting every one of them and try to pull that permit. So we're trying to, I'm going through that to make sure we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing. but. So it's not quite the urgency I thought it was going to be, but I think we should still kind of look at alternatives to maybe get around this a little bit so we aren't subject to all their testing and all the things that they're requiring us to do under the new permit. And you said it was good until when? I'm sorry. 26. 2026. 2026. And then the last thing I have is the Bimbler traffic uh, study. Talk to the county engineer. Uh, he was trying to set up a meeting with, we we're going to try to go to the, the mayor level between the two towns, but he's decided he'd prefer to do it at the engineer level first. So he's setting up a meeting with the Asbury Park engineer, the county engineer, and myself for sometime early February. Once we get that all worked out, then we're going to kind of get to make sure that the political people know to, you know, kind of get behind this a little bit. But it's going to take a, <coughs> not a substantial improvement, but a little bit of probably property taking at the corner of Ridge and uh, Sunset in Asbury Park to accomplish the new light that they're going to need there so the traffic doesn't come up in with. So, but that's scheduled for sometime early February, so probably by the second meeting in February, I'll report back on that. That's all I have for tonight. Hold on. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you so You talked fast tonight. I wasn't... I think I always talk that fast. You just have more items to talk about. All right, hold on. I couldn't even put them where I belong. All right, so uh, El what was the Elbron Avenue? I, I wrote it down. I met with Dave yesterday. We couldn't remember what we were discussing about Elbron. Elbron, last month, last meeting I brought in the DOT wants to close Elbron off and make a cul de sac out. That's what I, okay. Yeah. So I just wanted you to be aware that, that I sent okay. out the plans to all the emergency EMS fire guys and public works waiting for the response back, and then we'll go with a unified yeah. response back to DOT. But from what I'm getting back, the DPW doesn't have a problem with it. I didn't hear from the police yet. Fire department didn't seem to have a major, the EMS didn't have a major problem with it, so it looks like we may not okay. have a problem. Cool. Oh, please. Uh, striping you did. Uh, update on 1515? 1515, the plans were submitted. We're just waiting for a plane board meeting. I think we're, whenever the meeting is in February, we'll be on that. So agenda. it looks like that? Okay. Yeah. February 27th, I think. Was it February 27th? I think it's 27th. So, Rob, you only asked that question in March. Yes, yeah, <laughs> to see because it comes uh, the time to JPP trails. Look Maybe at we can take it off the fire. agenda after the March 1st, the right. first meeting in March. Planning board meeting is February 27th. We're trying to get him in the next meeting without asking you any questions. <laughs> I, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Greg, look, look at this. this is, I'm doing good. It's good. <laughs> Some of the stuff. Oh, um, oh, wait, wait. Hold well, on. crosswalk, Mammoth and South Lincoln. Any updates on that crosswalk? Mammoth and South. Oh, wait. They were waiting for the summer. Yeah, the summer. Counties, summer. Yeah, the county's yeah. going to do that study over summer. testing, poplar. Uh, I know about that one. I know we just. Very good. Okay. I got wow. one question for you. <laughs> so, a resident who lives on Sandy Lane, we work through Wayside, where Blair Court kind of comes in there, said they didn't. They said the lighting very dim, not adequate. Is that a Dave Brown issue, or is that something that uh, it, um, if there's existing lighting there? It's just too there dim. is existing lighting. Yeah. I just think it's dim. It's, it's yeah. a little darker in, in areas. Yeah, we've done this in the past, like especially down when you went to Rizal, down through the Esther. Yeah. Dave can call uh, JCP and L representative that Frank Luna, mm -hmm. and they'll put the LED, new LED lights All in right. there. I'll tell. I'll call yeah. Dave. That's a pretty easy fix. Okay. I uh, spoke to Frank Luna the other day about the street lighting, and I know we've had some complaints about certain areas. I, he told me that the plan is with JCPNL throughout the state, right? You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe they want to convert everything over to LED by 2031. Yeah, I'm not sure the date, but they're, they're, in, they're in that mode. Right. So we had talked about some of the areas that are not so bright and we need some lights. Those areas we would definitely wait until they're going to upgrade them anyway, so it doesn't. They're going to upgrade them without any cost to us. However, there's other areas where they're out. He said if they're if the lights are out for like a long time, it means they're 
they know about it. They're waiting for parts and some other things that go on. Now there's other areas where we may need additional poles. So I've asked him if we could potentially get out there, do an assessment, see how the town is. He's going to reach back out to me probably uh, next month or so. Yeah, I think we asked the police department to do a survey too, right? To yep. give us where dark areas are. Yeah. But I know they must be having a parts problem because I actually called about the light at Dennis and Deal. Yep. Because that number uses that to come across for the events we have there, and that light's been out for six months. So you know, that, that one needs to be replaced. Dave, the one up by us, uh, deal, and ba uh, deal and Bound, seemed like it was out. Then it was on, then it was out. It's very dark and wayside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the new things also with, with kind dark. of the way street yeah, a lot of trees. <laughs> The, 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 a lot of the new, you know, everybody's trying to soften everything and go, you know, more environment friendly. And a lot of the things that use, JCPN over the years has been reducing the lights. They've only been putting them on like at major intersections and like end of the street, like on a cul de sac, so you know it ends. So they're probably not promoting a lot unless we specifically ask for more lighting. They aren't going to promote more lighting. Right. Interesting. Well, we have uh, more of a walking trade, so. We have to really look at those areas where the walking is increasing. Um, yeah, probably where we put sidewalks, and you know we're yep. promoting that quite a bit lately. So. Yeah. Speaking of lights, I don't know that I'm a fan of it, but I see West Long Branch and a lot, not a lot of towns, but other towns are using the solars to light their street lights. Oh uh, yeah. They've got the panels up above. And yeah, I, no, I don't think they're using that for street lights. That's just the JCP and L putting panels on every pole they have to gain a little bit of electricity. Oh. Yeah. They, and you think? I mean, first it's like because what they get out of each panel is not a lot. Right. But when you put it across the millions of poles they own, that's quite a bit of electricity. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, okay. that's what that's there. Thank that's JCP and L doing that. Okay. Because I don't think you get enough juice out of that one small panel to light that light to them. Until okay. if you switch to LED, you might. But the current lights you would. The current okay. lights definitely not. Yeah. So, Thank you. But I, I don't think I know they don't use those panels for that reason right now. Okay. Uh, that's it, Greg. Marty, I guess closed session with whatever you guys have. On uh, naming of the various township facilities. Well, we were supposed to get the list from. Um, uh, from Tracy in regard to what's been named and what we're still considering. I mean, what were we specifically talking about? This was more of a process okay. conversation, so it wasn't anything specific. I brought it up the day yesterday. I know we didn't do this previously, and his, I don't think I'm misspeaking, and I think he would let me speak for him. He believes we actually should have a resolution slash ordinance on how to name it. So I don't have an objection one way or the other. I know we kind of person committee before Chris and Rich kind of did that but just to avoid can I say conflicts or just to follow the process I, I that was his thought yesterday. well so why don't we why don't we think about wh how we'd like the procedure to move forward uh, and we'll shoot our ideas out at the next work session rather than try to shoot yeah. the ideas out now I think it's a great idea to come up with some sort of criteria and and a plan, so uh, I think we're all in agreement with that. So put your ideas together, and we'll. If uh, the work session's light next meeting, we'll do it then. If not, we can push it to the next meeting. Uh, Dave, you're on turf fields. Go ahead. All right, let's talk about turf fields. So I met with Mike Patrico and Joe Palumbo from the soccer club uh, this week, and uh, we have been talking about this for a while. This is an issue that hasn't gone away. It's been going on for a long time. Ocean Township's fields are. Mediocre at best. Uh, our kids have been playing on the same crummy fields that I played on, and the, the history of the Ocean Township Soccer Club is it's going to be turning 50 years old in a couple of years. So this has been going on a long time. So we are going to be turfing the first field in Ocean Township history, other than the high school field. Interesting enough, it's going to be the Kenny Pickett Field. So that is part one of the plan to at least, and this is going to be a multi-use field, Township's, uh, you know, going to budget for this thing. Um, and so it's great because everybody can use this field, including the soccer club and all these other things. Uh, but the bigger thing is that we want to move forward with probably a phase two and a phase three to talk. And Mike's fully committed to trying to get these, all of our recreational facilities up and, you know, into the, you know, into the future. Because right now, 
as I said, some of these things are like what we played on as kids. So anyway, um, it's all really boils down to money. A turf field runs approximately a million dollars. I was going to say. Greg that, says a little mm -hmm. more. When we did the high school, it was a million dollars, and that was what, eight months eight, ago? Eight years. eight years ago, right? I think if you yeah, want four, the trimmings. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Asbury Park yeah. was close to a million also. If you want the lights, you want the bathroom, you want the storage facility, it all adds up. So um, here's the issue. We're obviously looking for grant money. That's nice. Private funding, wonderful. There is some private funding out there. Um, and then, you know, Ocean Township Soccer Club's commitment to having these type of fields, and they want to pony up. I think they finally, they've been talking about this for a long time, and I think they're finally willing to say, we're willing to come to the table with X amount of dollars, and we want to be a partner here. Uh, Walt Township, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Walt Township Soccer Facility. It is as nice as it comes. I mean, you go there, and the town basically was township land, uh, Wall, Wall Soccer Club rents this land for a, a buck, and they've got a turf field there, plus all their other fields. It is just a very... Is that the one by the police? Yeah. When you go up that hill or whatever? It's the one that's off of 18th or Belmar Boulevard. Okay, that's there. what I'm thinking of. Okay. I mean, they have tournaments there, and it's just a wonderful facility. We don't have that. Um, you know, unfortunately, Ocean Township sort of lot landlocked with this thing, so we've got some of the fields playing at, at the Intermediate School, which is Board of Ed facility. Some of the games are at Palaya Park. Uh, Palaya Park being the better fields in Ocean Township, so everybody's vying for the same thing. And then, of course, the high school, which everybody wants to play in high school, so including the high school. So you can imagine how much difficult this is to find uh, you know, people to do. So anyway, I wanted to kind of just chum this out to you guys because phase one is going to go through. Probably 2024, I believe, is the... Do you have underwriters for that one and just the other ones are unfunded? Yes, correct. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, just to follow up on that when yep. you say underwriters well right now it's going to be some fundraising the township is committing i believe 1.5 million dollars to this project i don't know that's well yeah. it's that's it's that's what we're going back to do i believe yeah, part the, the budget. part of the budget. budget but we don't have anything earmarked for 2023 yet on the turf yeah. so i don't think 2023 is realistic at least from what everybody i talk to so it's something that I just wanted to chum out to you going forward, that there is a need. Everyone can benefit, not just the soccer club. And I want you to understand the soccer club is just one entity that's going to be used. There's field hockey, there's lacrosse, there's band, there's summer camps, there's whoever else can use these fields. You know, they're tossed your fields. Anybody can use them. So it's not just a, you know exclusive type of thing. Um, and the football uh, program, which is a township run program, will be run over there at the, the picket field over there. So. These are the things that we're sort of uh, dealing with, um, but money is, is really the biggest issue. So um, I just, I think my plan was to talk to Mike, talk to Joe, and then I think I'd like to bring them back to a meeting in the near future and let them sort of explain what their vision is too, so that everybody get, gets the, the big picture here. So I'm just throwing you guys a little appetizer and uh, we'll have a big meal and we'll figure this whole thing out because it, it really is, it is amazing when you go to Neptune, Long Branch, you know, uh, Oceanport, how nice their facilities are. And then you come here and it's like, Ugh. Oceanport's nice? Well, it's better than here. Is it really? I don't know. Everybody's better I don't value it because I grew up there. Yeah, and I know grass is always greener. Tin Falls has a nice place. Tin Falls has The turf is always greener. The turf. Yeah, the turf is greener. So one, of, the same thing. so one of the other things I, I want to throw out to you is there are a lot of these companies out there that want your land. <laughs> Uh, Match Fit is one of them, and the guy over in Titan Falls, the uh, the big one over there. So the thing is, that's a business. They want to run those fields 24/7, tournaments, tournaments, and we don't really have those type of facilities here. And I'm, you know, I'm putting a plug in for our club, being that it's kind of an organic club. There's 400 kids playing in this club. They've been around for 50 years. It would be a shame to sort of sell out to some company because they're going to build us a free turf, but we're not. Our kids aren't going to be able to use it. So we don't have fields and grasslands like Tin Falls or Upper Freehold Township. So, you know, but it's always a big issue is like, you know, where do you get the money from? So anyway, more to come, and that's all I've got for you today. One quick follow-up. Yep. So phase two and three. So these are hypothetical money, phase no, 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 two. No, I was going to use the next one. If yeah. money was no object, sure. would they want everything turf? No. What we would want to do is... Picket field's getting done first. Right. Then they want to do either one or two fields in Palaya Park, and that would be it. I mean, it's not like we want to turf every field That's in Ocean Township. Right. You know, okay. there, there is a, you know, a limiting amount. 
But yeah, that would allow so much more access. Remember, you can play on these fields, you know, all kinds of weather, minus right. snow, no pesticides, you're not mowing them, you're not maintaining them. Um, it is limited also because you have to budget for that field to be replaced in about 10 years also. Well, funny you say that because <laughs> the high school was told 20 years and it's no, already starting to show a little no, wear and tear. We were, we were told 10. We were not told 20. Right. Nobody was ever Because it's told starting 20. to show some wear and tear. Yeah, 10 to 12. Yeah, yeah my understanding right. was 10 when yeah. my dad jumped in. Yeah. 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 10 years. All right, sure. so 10 years. So a 10 new years, bib or whatever they call yeah. that. 10 years what? comes up pretty quick. A new quick. bib. Right. 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 Yeah. So, yeah, we are looking to all different things, but um, I think there's a big commitment from the kids in this, you know, from this organization that I think we could hopefully come together on this. So. Good stuff. All right. Good. That's all I got. Let's go around the horn. I got a couple of quick ones. So, um, got a message from a resident who was concerned that uh, she was late for some appointments because of the deal road closure. Um, I talked to Greg. I talked to. I talked to a couple of people. Talked to Tracy. Um, she does post information on our website and social media when she's made aware of it. So we tried to quickly figure out, well, somebody's got to know what's happening because the cops are there and the permits are there. So I'm talking to Greg. Um, the permit could be issued months before the work is done, but the police know about it immediately because they ought to put the resources there. So oh, oh, Tracy's fine with this. She's just going to reach out to the police and ask them to always let her know, and she'll post it. Right. So whenever there's a, whenever there's a detour. Right. right. So just FYI. Um, Got a request um, to, and I talked to Dave about this yesterday, uh, from a couple, I wouldn't say a lot, but a couple residents about not only having in-person meetings, but going back to adding, not substituting, adding virtual meetings to the, adding virtual meetings to our meetings. Um, I, again, I don't want to speak for Dave, but he was all about transparency and open government, so he was fine with it. He said, completely up to the council. I'm throwing it out here to see what people think. When you say that, is that like somebody being able to zoom in on that yes. TV while we're having this session right yes. now, and mm -hmm. then downstairs as well? So we haven't done it up here in the past, I don't believe. We've done it for the regular meeting, um, but it's, it's able to be done, mm -hmm. so completely up to... Yeah. I, I would be for it. I remember when we had that, we had a uh, dual, you know, in-person and virtual. It was a little tricky to kind of, so as long as those, and you said it would, the you know, there are ways to make it happen. Correct. So as long as those issues are worked out, I'm for that, you know. I mean, you don't need a moderator. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, got I'm so for it. seeing yeah. how, the, how it works, and if it works in other towns with them trying to do the hybrid, what other towns are presently doing it right so now. So the board of Ed here does it. Mm -hmm. Both hybrid, yeah. So, so they they have oh, somebody to right. do the right. monitoring. Right. They do the who says Yeah, right. yeah. just to control like who's yes. talking in the room versus Asbury. who's talking on camera. One person, you have to not to get too. You have to sign in. They have to say with either text in, excuse me, uh, chat in there your name where you're a resident and maybe the topic you want to discuss. I won't swear to that one, but you don't get entered into the meeting unless you. Disclose. Disclose that. So right. you got to be let in. You're muted. Until you're you raise muted. your hand. You're unmuted. Then you're muted again. Mm -hmm. so and somebody does that from the board of ed. Does yes. that? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it sounds great. Dave. I mean, from my experience, the technology seems like it's there, but the user, the end user, is not always so swift. And between the barking dogs, the crying babies, the uh, honey, is this on? Uh, the remotes, <laughs> the um, that, that would be. I, I hear you, but that with a moderator. We'll I, I just think, I mean, my experience during the whole COVID thing was was not positive. Right. I'm playing boy. Yeah. It was not positive was at all. I, I think people were yelling over each other. It was fun the first two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, mean, I'll just I'll just speak to somebody who, like, at some point, would not have even been able to attend council meetings because I had a newborn infant, yeah. and it was all virtual at that point. So I appreciated the ability to attend when yeah. I literally wouldn't be able to attend. I mean, conceptually, so there are people out there who, you know. Can, cannot physically yeah. attend. Yeah. You know, I think we should poke around with our colleagues in the surrounding towns to see who's doing it, has it worked, 
you know, what what are their thoughts on it? I think this is where we reach out to people we know. Let's yeah. reach out to some of the neighboring towns and, you know, see what they say and see how they see their opinions too. Yeah, I just or even just to the school board, you know, how they are, you know. Yeah, maybe we should all try and log into meetings. one of them. <laughs> I, I, I have actually. Have, Rose is on every yeah, week. I have logged in, yeah. and it seemed to work out pretty well. I mean, you just you really can't say anything until they're they're very they well. Their moderator, but I don't know who. Muted. Yes, I he don't know who the, let you. I don't right. know who the uh, moderator I think it's the is. Vice president. So somebody's got to be in charge of moderating. Somebody's got to cut you off when your time is up. Somebody's got to filter what you're saying. Because I found Jesse. Jesse's like, I know. Oh yeah, Jesse. You got to be the uh, the police. Because it's tough. Let's let's. Uh, I, I think we ask some of the colleagues around and, and see how it works. If it works, what are the you know what are the pluses and minuses? Uh, you know, I'm I'm listening to you, Dave. I think it makes sense what you're saying. Uh, there's a lot that goes on when you have the, the remote, so. I have one more, hold please. I gotta remember where it is. Give me a second please, I did that one. I did that one. Orange, you got anything while I was looking? <laughs> <laughs> that might, well, that might I mean, the okay. two things, the deer um, oh. issue, we've been working on that. Um, there's um, s some limitations, so we, all, we all saw the study. Um, we, we were in, we had a meeting where we were in touch with the um, White Buffalo Project, which is this group in Ohio that does this um, sterilization I spoke to Tony method. Last night. That was okay. interesting. Their comments. I read through some of them today about the study that was yeah. done. Yeah. Yep. So they're trying to get that done also in Princeton. Um, so we have some support in Princeton. You know, basically some. Um, you know, they, they, they're facing the same roadblocks at the state level that we are to get that done. Um, one of the roadblocks is that you have to get written permission of every homeowner within 200... 450 feet. Yeah, 200 one feet radius. radius um, you know, 400 feet diameter of where you're going to be doing the darting of the deer to, to um, you know, and then you bring them in for the surgery to patients remove their ovaries so that they're... Um, sterile can't produce more more babies. He gave us um, a figure around thirteen hundred per deer, mm -hmm. I believe. He, probably, he figured it was a hundred thousand. Oh no! To get, no 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 total. Oh no! no, no. Per year, for hundred thousand per year just just to get a He's, reduction of twenty. Oh yeah, twenty yeah. twenty yeah. percent. And so yeah, it would have to be over. It would have to be like over a five year period. So there is an investment that you'd have to, right. yeah, financial investment. But um, he also said the numbers are. You know, obviously, one area we didn't hit like you know Wayside or uh, right. you know, Cedar Village, or, um, just all the other areas. Did. You know, Tony gave me a lot of very interesting information, but as I stated to him on the phone, we have to wait until we get the response back from the state mm -hmm. before we make a move. However, I think that the council is going to have to make a move and make a decision at some point once we hear back from the state. We also received an email, Margie, you were copied on it from Senator Lesniak. And you wanted to speak on that? Yeah, so the, what this um, this rule that you have to get written permission from 200 radius, you know, that that is a roadblock to getting this the darting of the deer um, implemented. Um, so there's a there's a um, bill at the state at the Senate level, which um, Looks like it got by, posted. I yes. Believe, uh, so it's being moved forward to uh, not have to have that requirement, which would help the. Uh, regardless, thirteen hundred dollars per deer. Well, that's won't that the, bankrupt us? Yeah. No, <laughs> that's why. Well, we might have to delay the turf field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All but, of them. But they, but they uh, get a little. Dave, how are you with that? But it's like when they release. But it's, it's, it's thirteen. So we know. No not comment. a tattoo. <laughs> Um, I, like I said, I think that... I mean, it's... Well, how many deer are we talking about? It was 100 deer what? in huh? that area. And that's half of... What, half of them are female? You don't have to do all of them. It's just a, you know... It's not like but we're the taking, reproductive cycle, they said, we, we would never be able to keep up on them. But right? once we... Once we take over fi a five-year period, you would be. You know, that it would reduce the levels to a, a level that you don't have to do it every year. Do you know we, what I, mean? I don't know. That we, one report scared me when they were saying that we weren't even at the high production time when we did the study, and we were already how many over what would be recommended to be safe for our area. Like we have to do something. It's we, just like, we wow, really right. can't. We do have to until do we until we hear from the state back on what we've requested information on. 
we can't even have a discussion yet. So what we'll do is we'll hold off on it until we hear back from the state. Thirteen hundred. I you know I went over numbers with Tony last night. They were they were staggering. You know to, to go that route. Um, but it's the most it, humane route. It it's is. the most humane route, and over time, I think it works the the best because you, I mean you're going to have to do a hunt what every year, and you're just reducing that. Well, you're, I'm not a hunt person, so yeah. No, I mean, if, or <laughs> just, you know, if you'd be reducing the if you kill one deer, you'd reduce the deer population by one. If you sterilize one deer, you're reducing the population by well, if you kill the female deer. Well, the, well, <laughs> right, it's the same effect. Even if, if you sterilize the deer, I mean. All right, why don't we save the discussion? Oh, yeah. Let's, you know, like, let's save the discussion. I think Marky and Rob and the rest of you, another <laughs> deer that we have to look at to are the neighboring towns. We're going to do something that Tinton Falls yeah, isn't, or that. Neptune, or Eaton Town, or West Long Ranch. Yeah, I think we're going to have to discuss with the neighboring townships what they're willing to do also because they I, might be able they might w be willing to be partner with this yeah that's why it's situation. probably not a bad idea to be a kickstart that towns are yeah. Yeah. touching them yeah definitely no, it, it so actually should, is beyond the neighboring towns because yeah. think about it you know if there are other towns who are having you know who would like to do a non-lethal method if that's possible throughout the state and you know shouldn't all of that be pulled together you have the League of Municipalities. That then puts pressure politically on the legislature to change something. And that's really what you're looking to do. You want to try to change the ideas in the state that you have to go, the only way to go is this way. Yeah, right. So, but there's a, there's a lot of municipalities out there that may think yeah, the so same way you do. I think the next step would be to, you know, talk to, we'll start with neighboring towns. I think that's and then. Idea, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. and find out what their interests are yep. and what they do and we can we can start reaching out to them and uh, start that conversation mm -hmm. for sure while we're waiting for our information to come back mm -hmm. anything else March um, I had one more thing let me think oh we, we have a meeting uh, coming up regarding um, uh, the Deal Lake um, with the De Deal Lake Watershed Association. I saw that. Um, we're doing the dredging of the ponds, um, those yeah, areas. We met with them. Maybe I would hope we could include, but I think we're past that. We met with them yesterday. Oh, you met with them, yesterday. Met with them yesterday. Oh, good. Okay, good. I didn't bring so it we're going to meet with Tom Arnone and kind of get the county up. level involved as well. That's yeah, coming yeah, we up. We talked about their four items and we pretty much addressed all four of them. So okay. they were very happy when they left. Good. Yeah. I think that's it. Dr. Dave? Yes, the master plan subcommittee is meeting this Thursday. I'm waiting for Ron Kirk to give me a time. Um, Who's on that committee? Myself, Ed Defilia. Chris Cisliano was on that committee, so I think that by default that makes you on that committee. Uh, or the designee. Or the designee. <laughs> I'll take it if you want. Or Eric. <laughs> um, Ron Kirk, probably Dave. And uh, so, yeah, so that's just, uh, and I'm Jim Higgins, of course. And then we're right. going to just sort of hash out all the different things that we want to be in the master plan going forward for the future. You know, commerce zones, rehabilitation zones, utilities. So if anybody has any burning desire, feel free to either I, show I up or I met with Jim two money. weeks ago, uh, along with David, in regard to this. Uh, Chris had put his input into the master plan. I mean, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. There were a couple items I wanted to, you know, elaborate on I think that you know you, you touched on them commerce and that fermentation zone that they discussed and a few other things so yeah it's uh, it, 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 hopefully we can get this done and through the hopper yeah so once it comes out of subcommittee then I guess Jim will get a draft going and then the public will get their crack at this it's so I mean hopefully in the next couple months and then address retro implications or not wasn't that somebody's concern last time we were talking People that have things in the hopper that could be affected yeah. by the projected changes. Sure, sure. So all these things are on the table. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. Anything yep. else? That's it. Kel. Um, brought up the deer thing, so I was just going to, I didn't get to read that entire report, but I thought mm -hmm. it was kind of interesting how they were inferring that certain things might have been um, fluffed a little, mm -hmm. um, but then other things yeah. might have been underestimated mm -hmm. based on the timing, but you already got that. I had um, an inquiry that's Tracy's working on right now with, um, I don't know, code enforcement, I guess, is going around putting up violations. Um, yeah. So I had a neighbor. So Jen, 
so I can give you an update if you want. Sure. But the reason they were doing it was the snowstorm. So they want it because somebody's basketball hoop fell. Last year. Damaged a car, and they tried to file a claim against us mm -hmm. for us doing it, but it was clearly in the right way. Mm -hmm. So there is an ordinance, and has been for at least 10, 12, 15 <coughs> years on the books, saying you can't have not only basketball hoops, but anything in it right away. Right. So they have periodically put that out there and said, hey, now it's just a warning, just saying, please move it. Snowstorm's coming, get it back out. Now, there's no harm in putting it out there, playing and moving it back. No, this is a structure. The one I'm talking oh. about is a structure that's in oh their property. Oh my, okay. So it's not <laughs> in a street, it's not on the not sidewalk. Oh. oh, it's on their property? Yes. But in the it's right not way. within the 10 feet. And I said that 10 feet from the curb is considered right away. Yeah. Grass. Somebody's 10 feet of grass is considered right away. Yes. Hmm. That seems absurd. There's no sidewalks. Sorry. No, no the, the reason it's like that because all the utilities are in there. 10 yeah. feet going. Well, back. You have, you have, I mean, you have the Jason Yeah, I know where my little box is. <laughs> and, and all those guys have to be in that 10 feet. It gets pretty jammed up. Mm -hmm. But how would that impact if like, it was like a snowstorm or if there was... If a the plow couldn't hit this puppy. Yeah. Yeah. It's that far off. Push push well, no, no, it's just, it it's on the other side of the curb. Okay. And it's been there probably 18 years, which I think is why she's so upset. It's like, okay, I've had it for 18 years, but now I have five days to move this structure. Like there was five, you know, I don't know. I didn't know there was a storm coming, but she did explain the 10 feet right of way. He wrote sidewalks. There are no sidewalks. So they want her to take this down within five. Yeah, I had an issue with somebody. she's out of the country. All right. So then what I would do is email David to see if we can get her an extension. I had the same problem with somebody on on one of the roads in Oakhurst that had to remove bushes because they were in the in the right of way. They've been there for 45 years, but now they're causing a problem with the site. So mm -hmm. she had to remove them within days. Just email David so that he can reach out to Jen and how you know just, just see you know see how long <coughs> she needs of an extension. And I mean, she just left for Cabo yesterday, uh, so I don't. Yeah, <laughs> she's okay. coming back. <laughs> so, all right. So, I mean, <laughs> see, see if David. Somebody took a picture of it and oh, sent it. You know what? See if David can get an extension for you know. Cabo. Yeah, but when's the storm coming? I don't have anything on that. There's oh, no storm coming. Oh, okay. I think they're just being. <laughs> <just being, laughs> never come. Yeah. There okay. was one allegedly, but that got him. Pro Kelly, what? I, you got anything else? I do not. Okay. Um, I have our check from Altice, which shows you the nice franchise fee that we get. $251,520. What? It just, nice. It's all you. How much is the state taking? <laughs> and we met, uh, I met with the uh, Milan Terry Foundation Mayor's Ball Committee. We went over sponsorships. Uh, information will be going out. We're live, uh, Kelly. If you could just say that tonight at the uh, at the meeting about the charity ball and uh, the date and stuff. What is the date? It's actually the day of the Kentucky Derby, so it's May sixth. Great idea. Great thing. <laughs> totally by accident. <laughs> <laughs> totally by accident. I wear my jockey suit. Um, <laughs> oh, is there a theme? Though? It's going to be a theme. With it's the Kentucky Derby theme. Not oh, even knowing awesome. that it was Kentucky no Derby yeah. day. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I want to see your hat. That's good. That was <laughs> wow. a good. That was a great mistake. Completely hysterical. So yeah, we'll actually be doing Derby racing. Oh, cool. Um, There's some really cool sponsorship Wait, what that opportunities mean, for <laughs> simulcasted yeah. races that you can oh. bet and oh, win okay. auction tickets. Okay. All right. I had envisioned like poles with horse heads, like people <laughs> running. No, no, <laughs> real simulcasted races <laughs> okay. from. Other places. And there's great, <laughs> great, great <laughs> spots. No, like war yeah. drums? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're pulling the truck out. <laughs> yeah, so there's this year we're entertaining a lot of different sponsorship levels because, you know, it's 250 to attend, but it's, you know, white glove service, valet parking, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. High end, you know, um, food. But other people want to contribute but don't can't afford to attend or don't want to attend. So we have options that start at like $20. Uh, they can buy a horse and have their name oh, in the cool. program and name the horse themselves, and that horse will be in the race. Hmm. Cool. So, yeah, it should be cool. I had a typo, totally my fault. Otherwise, I'd be having real um, save the date cards for you. But that Thank a typo. You. Um, it's in the calendar. And uh, <laughs> David, myself, Greg met with Jack in regard to a municipal fiber optic uh, plan that he had come up with. Uh, Jack, I saw your email, got it today. Uh, we had asked for some numbers so that we can give some projections out to the council. 
with um, his idea. Uh, it's a innovative, it's different. Um, Greg and David were speaking about logistics and stuff, but you know, uh, what we did was ask Jack to put some numbers together. We'll review and then we'll forward it out to the council. Um, and you know, Rob, I know you know a lot about the tech, so I'll probably lean on you more with with this stuff. So Jack, thanks for meeting. Once I review that, I'll get back to the council. Uh, I met with uh, our prosecutor, Ray Santiago, yesterday. Um, he wanted to discuss some community outreach programs with us, some collaboration with the senior community. Um, they have Operation Helping Hands. Um, so they have some great ideas and some things that we'd like to have them partner up in the senior communities such as Rowan Meadows and Cedar Village. Uh, we were talking about uh, how the seniors are being targeted uh, for the cyber um, where they ask them to go in and pay a bill that doesn't exist. He mentioned this IC3.gov which is um, which will stop a transfer within 72 hours of money that may be transferring from your account over to one of the scammers so I asked them to look into like some sort of uh, you know outreach that they can do in these communities and then of course the other issue that I had talked to him about was the opioid issue that affects you know and I'm you know looking out for our community see if there's something that we can do with the schools or some additional education uh, there was opioid money out there that he was explaining each town had gotten a piece of this lawsuit that went federally through the uh, pharmaceutical companies. It's not a large chunk, but we, you know, I'm not even sure how much money we get in Ocean Township. They said Asbury Park received about $26,000. It's not a huge amount, but there's different programs that we can look at for education on the opioids. Um, I, I think that, you know, more that we can do with partnering and then even talking to the other towns to see what they got um, in funds will be additional ways that we can help the community out with the crisis that you know goes on with the opioids. So he'll be following up with us. Um, I also met with uh, All American Assisted Living today. I met with her, uh, Cecily. They're opening a new center up on West Park and Shafto Road. It seems like it's uh, they're leaning towards veteran based. It's got a very good price point. They're having an open house, which I'll announce at the next meeting, but it's going to be Tuesday, the 21st of February, where you um, we can go in and we can stop by. It's from 1 to 3 o'clock. But uh, she, she wants to also partner up with the seniors, so I gave her a few of the contacts that I have with uh, Rolling Cedar and uh, 777 West Park Avenue just to get you know her message out and speak to those people. So, uh, you know, I, I think that the more that we can offer to the ever-growing senior community in Ocean Township is a major plus for us. Okay? That's all I have. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sean, Mr. Mayor, the mm -hmm. allocation on the opioid for Ocean Township is $17,385.14. Okay, so he said the low end was 600 and, you know, Asbury was at a decent amount, so maybe I'll reach out to John Moore and see what they have planned okay. with their you know dollar figure and maybe we can you know yeah. work something out something that i think may, we, maybe we had done way in the past i don't know but we haven't done it again Real is an in-person um, ribbon you know the purple ribbons overdose awareness day we do a proclamation but some people like a, a physical event where people can come together do you know when that is give me a second well, googling it we i don't know if we ever had one in town but I took somebody a class on we west did we, we did have one we well it wasn't we a class so i we put them I out but i think up. people like to gather Wait, and I've asked, we, had people ask that, me, like, that, are you doing something? I'm looking for something. Yeah, with the beds and yeah. everything so and how the kids hide it in soda cans. Yes. I'm oh, trying okay. to locate yeah. I'm trying to locate the person who ran that through uh, That was great. Through the Fed. They set up a, a, a bedroom, a, a, a bedroom of a, of a child, of a teenager. And they basically set it up like it's a real room and they've got the shelves and the, and the cabinets and, and things all over. And they show you the different areas that the kids hide the stuff like they'll take this and 
they'll unscrew it and they'll be like, yeah, right under here is where they're hiding, you know, this. Or yeah, it looks like a soda can, but it's not it, even a real can. It was a great program. It was literally right before COVID. So mm -hmm. um, right after that, a lot of stuff dropped off. Um, the prosecutor told me the same thing, that a lot of these programs dropped off, but I guess mm -hmm. things are starting to come back. I would love to bring that back as well. It was a great educational mm -hmm. piece. It was an eye-opener. PD ran it in conjunction with effect. Not the PD. That yeah, I feel like the Ocean Township school, police were the there. Yeah, the town. And then some other guy. The yeah, school did it. It, was it wasn't the school. Though. We did it. We did it through the town. It was in the West Park Rec West Center in the back built yeah, in the yeah. back room. The senior room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, before I'll have to go back on my old emails. I'll be able to find them. The PD did run it with the feds, <laughs> and we actually have videotape. Do we? Do can we get I them back in? I can put it back on the program. I gotta find it. But yeah, I'd love to get them back in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of time. No. That was that great. He's like, listen to that there. I got it. I got it. Anything I need. The camera covers the door. Why not? He knew right where to go. For the record, it's August 31st. Tom, August 31st. Is what? Yeah. 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 Y
Right. You guys want to get out early. All right. Uh, Greater Ocean Township Chamber of Commerce is ha uh, having our annual uh, scholarship awards. Uh, you can pick up your applications or you can actually apply right online. We've uh, really moved into the 21st century, or century, whatever century we're in. Uh, so you can apply online at gotcc.org. Uh, we are also having our scholarship luncheon, which is March the 21st. It is over at the Renaissance. You can also go on the same website to order tickets. We are honoring, uh, I can make it, well, I'll, I'll announce it next week. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, great awards this year. Thank you. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Okay, so this evening we are going to honor four young ladies for their silver award. We have Sky, Julia, Grace, and Luella, who worked with their township leaders and the community to improve the safety of the route that kids take for biking and walking to school. Specifically, the four-way stop area up on Bound and Deal Roads. Their project consisted of three main aspects. Make the four-way stop safer, communicate road safety to adults, and communicate bike safety to kids. For their first goal, after connecting with town, they received the approval to install a new crosswalk and to put up signs to communicate to drivers about road and bike safety. The girls reached out to the community via social media and lawn signs to inform adults about children riding their bikes to school and to slow down and be more aware. They also taught the third and fourth grade students at the local elementary school about bike safety and placed bike safety signs at the bike racks at school. Girls, you did a great job. We're gonna come down from the dais and we're gonna give you our awards. So come on up, girls. So we have three here tonight, right? Name? Luella. Luella. Julia. Julia. Grace. Grace. I have a Julia at home. Girls, turn around so the camera can see you. Oh, look. Come on back with us, and guess what? You guys are on TV. So all your friends in school can see tonight that you're with the mayor and council. Rob, you want to get in front? Because you're actually... Sh oh, you can see through them? <laughs> so... I have to tell you, this this project that you guys did is literally up in my area where I live, and it's it's great that you did a whole safety project. So, who would like to speak first a little bit about the project and what it took? Don't be shy. Let's start here. <laughs> Come on. Um, what the project took? Yeah. Um. I'm Grace. It took like a lot of teamwork, um, a lot of hours. We worked really hard together and we brainstormed a bunch of ideas on how to just make everything safer and how to teach kids about how to be aware and know what's going on on the road so they can be the safest they can be. So, Grace, real quick, what was one of your biggest accomplishments or one of your biggest challenges that you had to get to this project done? Um, probably reaching out and just... Finding ideas first was the hardest, um, and then reaching out and trying to communicate like what we wanted to do exactly, um, and then explaining to younger kids how to be safe. Grace is learning from her mother out here, <laughs> right Janice? She's doing a great job, I love it. This project um, adds to the safety of the Township of Ocean up in the wayside section, and we're really pleased, ladies, with what you've done. Does anybody else want to say a few words? Sure. Let's. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I thought one of the coolest things was being able to meet with our town officials to like directly speak with them about the issues we were facing, and just to see like to better communicate with our town to reach our goals. Excellent. Th th this is what it's all about. You you get into a volunteer situation at this age, myself serving as a cub and a Boy Scout a long time ago. 
it's all about the public awareness and what you guys did, ladies did. And I'm, I'm really pleased for you. Would you like to say a few words as well? Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing the presentation with the, middle, with the elementary school kids. We played Jeopardy, and they learned a lot about bike safety from us. And I think they're going to look up to us. Did you ladies work with both elementary schools or just the one? Just, just Wayside so far. Wayside, okay. So just right up in the area. Excellent. Okay, do the council wants to come up? Yeah. Girl Scouts Council? Yeah, thank you so much. So I work with the hey, you had to come up here so they can hear you. So I work with the girls, okay? I am the older girl experience manager for Girl Scouts of the Jersey Shore. So I work with 6th through 12th graders, and I work with the bronze, the silver, and the gold award. We had 58 silver award recipients. So this is the second highest award that Girl Scouts can earn in Girl Scouting. So a total, you had over 2,900 community service hours dedicated towards Monmouth and Ocean County, towards making the world a better place. So I just had one girl get accepted to Notre Dame two days ago, and the admissions counselor hand wrote her a letter saying how impressed she was with her silver award. So even though it might seem like a little bit far away, it's definitely benefiting you at, for Girl Scouts and outside of Girl Scouts. So I just wanted to come up and say congratulations and thank you so much for your support. They would not have been able to do that without you. So it's important to work together. Thank you. Thank you, that was our pleasure. We're so happy that we can do this. officials, the governor, you have from mayors, the state senators, so a lot of recognition, okay? You. You're welcome. Okay, girls, now we also have one for you from the council. So we have Grace, your certificate of accomplishment, signed by the mayor and council. Skyla's not here, right? And Julia, congratulations. And Luella, congratulations. And ladies, we also have a special guest here tonight. Our senator, Senator Vin Gopal, has come in to give you his own proclamations. This is pretty special. Senator, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of issues with the safety on 35, the traffic, the council has not been doing a great, I'm just joking, sorry. <laughs> so, Congratulations to you guys, Finn, back, all the way back there. That's okay. Um, congratulations, uh, Sloan, I'm buying a few cookies. Your mom sent the link, so um, I'm going to give this to you guys. It's really incredible, all the hours you put out. Congratulations. Thank you to the governing body for working with these incredible young women. Excited to see what you guys are going to continue to do. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, ladies, if you stay up front here, we'll take some pictures. Moms, if you want to take a few pictures with the girls, come on up. as we re-adjourn. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, the purpose of the public portion is to solely ask questions to understand resolutions that appear on the agenda, and it's not an occasion for a public hearing on an ordinance. All questions not related to items on this agenda should be asked during the public comments portion at the conclusion of the meeting. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to be heard? Jack, you comment or... The agenda only. Was that the agenda? No. Nope. Okay. Seeing here none. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda with the minutes and resolutions 25 through 32? Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Individual action. Vouchers in the amount of $10,653,497.81. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Individual action. Resolution 33. Authorizing the cancellation of real estate taxes paid for totally disabled veterans Letter A, Block 121, Lot 5, in the amount of $5,810.13. Letter B, Block 33, Lot 41, in the amount of $4,650.81. And letter C, Block 152, Lot 1.01, 1 
C2304 in the amount of $4,161.37. Someone please offer. I'll offer. And second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Nepotani? Yes. Resolution 34, authorizing the <coughs> refund of the Homestead rebate credit to the following. Letter A, Block 26, Lot 37, the amount of $1,204.37. Letter B, Block 31, Lot 66, in the amount of $699.73. Letter C, Block 150.07, Lot 18, in the amount of $553.28. And Letter D, Block 40.10, Lot 9, in the amount of $882.90. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Sepletani? Yes. Resolution 35, authorizing the refund of 2022 senior deduction credit to the following. Block 33.20, lot 1, in the amount of $250. Someone please offer. I will offer. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Sepletani? Yes. Resolution 36. Authorize the extension of the installment plan for property owners who have not remitted their installment for the special assessment as confirmed June 9th, 2022. Someone please offer. I will offer. Second. I'll second. Hachera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napotani? Yes. Resolution 37, authorizing the cancellation of taxes for 2022 and refunding or crediting the tax overpayments resulting from the New Jersey Tax Court and Monmouth County Tax Board judgments to the following, letter A, block 8.01, lot 16, in the amount of $9,602.21. Letter B, block 8.02, lot 12, in the amount of $10,260.37. Letter C, block 8.02, lot 19, in the amount of $9,224.63. Block 8.01, lot 10, in the amount of $10,043.87. Letter E, Block 8.01, Lot 36, in the amount of $8,847.06. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yep. Donlin? Yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. <laughs> Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. Resolution 38, Authorized Professional Service Contracts for the year January 1st through December 31st, 2023 for the following. Our risk manager, North American Insurance Management, NAIM. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Resolution 39, authorize the transfer of appropriations in the calendar year 2022 budget. Someone please offer. I will offer. Second. I'll second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Resolution 41, authorizing an amendment to the interlocal... 40, oh, 40, I'm sorry. Resolution 40, approve the renewal contract with Delta Dental for the premier preferred and flagship plans for the period May 1st, 2023 through April 30th, 2025. Someone please offer. I will offer. Second. I'll second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Resolution 41, authorizing an amendment to the interlocal services agreement between the Township of Ocean and the Township of Ocean Sewerage Authority. Someone please offer. I will offer. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Resolution 42, authorizing an interlocal services agreement between the Township of Ocean and the DLA Commission. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Hmm? Got them all on? Hold, please.
Lisa, just an FYI, so that you know, you were under the consent agenda. You have been approved to the zoning board. Welcome aboard. Thank you for your service. Nice the, the, uh, the next zoning board meeting is, they'll, they'll be reaching out to you on that. But thank you, Lisa, for stepping up. Okay, thank you. Ordinances for adoption. Ordinance 2407, which is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 21 of the Comprehensive Land Development Ordinance of the Township of Ocean, resolution relating to Ordinance 2407. Someone please open public comment on Ordinance 2407. I'd like to open public comment on Ordinance 2407. Second. Second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Napotani? Yes. yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2407, please step up to the microphone, state your name for the record. Seeing here none, someone please close public comment on Ordinance 2407. Call for to close. Second. 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 Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napotani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2407. I'd like to adopt Ordinance 2407 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Ordinance 2407 passes. Ordinance 2408, a bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements and the acquisition of various capital equipment for the township golf utility appropriating $1,600,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,520,000 bonds and notes to finance a portion of the cost thereof. Someone please open public comment on Ordinance 2408. I'd like to open public comment on Ordinance 2408. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera. Yes. Donlin. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Terry. Yes. Napotani. Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2408? Seeing here none, someone please close public discussion on Ordinance 2408. I'd like to close public discussion on Ordinance 2408. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera. Yes. Donlin. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Terry. Yes. Napotani. Yes. Action on Ordinance 2408. I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 2408 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Ordinance 2409, an ordinance amending Chapter 16 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965, entitled Parks and Playgrounds. Someone please open public discussion on Ordinance 2409. I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2409. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera. Yes. Donlin. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Terry. Yes. Napletani. Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 24, uh, 2409? Seeing here none. Action on, I mean, close public, uh, public comment on Ordinance 2409. I'd like to close public comment on Ordinance 2409. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2409. I'd like to, uh, I'd, I'd like to move to uh, adopt Ordinance 2409 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Ordinance 2409 passes. Ordinance 2410, an ordinance amending Chapter 16 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965, entitled Swimming Pools. Someone open public comment on Ordinance 2410. I'd like to open public comment on Ordinance 2410. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2410? Seeing here none. Someone please close public discussion on Ordinance 2410. I'd like to close public discussion on Ordinance 2410. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. And action on Ordinance 2410. I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 2410 and publish according to law. Second. Second. 
Bachera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletan? Yes. Ordinance 2410 passes. Introductions. We have one ordinance this evening. 24, Ordinance 2411, which is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 21 of the Comprehensive Land Development Ordinance of the Township of Ocean, establishing land use regulations for cannabis establishments and amending and supplementing Chapter 13 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965, entitled Taxation. Someone please introduce Ordinance 2411. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2411. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. And Ordinance 2411 will have its public hearing on uh, February 9th, 2023. We have our second public comment section. This is a time when you can speak about anything germane to the Township of Ocean. Uh, if you want to just come up, say a few words, you're more than welcome. State your name. An address. Here comes Jack. Jack, I could have brought you the mic. Seriously, I don't mean it. It's working. It should. It should be. Don't break it. Jack Kearns, Big Cross Place. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say a couple of things about the Girl Scout Awards tonight. Uh, congratulations to those girls who earned their silver awards, silver pins, uh, who are, I'm sure, are going to be positive contributions to our to our town and to the to the government, so forth. Very uh, future citizens who are going to do a good job. The Scouts have a reputation for that. They are from Troop uh, Eight Nine Zero, and uh, they did a good job. Sorry that they couldn't all be here tonight, but they certainly des certainly deserve from what they did for safety in the town with bicycles and so forth. Something really worthwhile. And also to thank the troop leaders for Eight Ninety who were here to help them with that. And lastly to thank the council for giving recognition to that kind of an effort. I think it's very important that our young people have examples such as we saw here tonight to help us grow till tomorrow. This town ain't going away, it's gonna be here. It's gonna need people like that. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Again, Lisa, thank you uh, for stepping up to the plate for us for uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Oh. I was going to say, nobody wants to leave. <laughs> <laughs> we just I'm all over it. A chair? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.